Bear with me a moment as we put tube amplifiers and motorcycle repairs and restorations aside to address this Emmy Award winner. This is a Food Saver FM 3600 vacuum packing machine. Picked this up in November for my mother, used it twice, and then came back here, used it again like five times, and on the fifth time, this thing just died dead in the middle of vacuuming, light shut off, and that was it. Now, to their credit, the folks at Food Saver, they took down information. They're like, no problem. Send it back. We'll give you a new one. This thing's like $160 for this piece of Chinese plastic junk. And this thing is chintzy. I mean, for those who own it know, like, you close the cover, and then there's this one, like, plastic lock here that feels like it's going to snap off to actuate it in the on position. It doesn't feel well made. Definitely not a 70s appliance. But in order to get the new one, I got to go and spend $30 on shipping to send this one back. So I figured at least let's see what's wrong. See if we could fix it if it's a repair or an autopsy or what. This is going to be the food saver breakdown. See if we could resurrect this piece of junk. Let's get started. I pull out the bag right quick and I'm gonna pull out the drip tray and anything else that's gonna tumble as I flip this thing over. I'll put this in the on lock position. And these are Phillips screws and you could hear the cheap Chinese plastic screech as you turn each one. It creaks and it cracks. This is made of garbage. And just to screw with you, no pun intended, they have a screw under this foot right here near the cord. Be sure not to forget that one. The first thing we see as I open it is an actuating switch right here. There's the on off switch. And forgive me, I don't have my gimbal here visiting. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I will demonstrate. We can see that actuation right there. And that would be something that would be tested. We could hear. And the switch sounds good. It's a nice positive click. It makes its way down, but if we look at the main board, there's a fuse right there. Begs the question is that fuse good? That fuse would need to be measured. That's a. There's a culprit right there because that fuse looks like, you know, I can't see directly, but it looks like that's a like main AC power going right through here, right? There's just a two minute inspection right to that fuse. Nothing else in this power supply gives cause for concern on immediate inspection. The only thing that I see, the capacitors have those uh, ridges in there. If something were to go wrong, they would explode from the top. They're fine. They're brand new, so it's not like 40-year-old capacitors or anything. Uh, the X2, X2 caps down here, so no slouch there. This particular resistor, somewhat beefy, looks fine. Doesn't look like any heat problems. And it looks like, I may be wrong, it looks like a thermistor over there. I'm going to have to take the number down. And if, the, and if it is the mister, it looks okay. It doesn't look like any heat problems. I don't see any issues with the power supply. Maybe underrated fuse and that's all. I'm going to have to test it. I do note this. Strange that there is a conductive heat pad on this voltage regulator on VD1, but not one on VT1, or maybe I just can't see it. That's the, that's the only interesting thing I note there. Between those two, you can see that right there. Other than that, everything seems fine. I look at the other side of the circuit board. I see no obvious cause for concern. Nothing melted, nothing exploded. I measured both the switch and the fuse with the continuity meter on the voltmeter, and both of them turned out to be good. Neither of these are a problem. I'm gonna have to work past this. I did go and measure the two resistors here. Both of them also showed to be good. We're going to take a look at what looks like voltage regulator. I'm going to have to get down, look at that number, see what that is. Interestingly, along this, I see um, measuring against the heatsink, which I assume is ground. I'm not sure yet. But on each pin, I see 165 volts DC. Each of them, 165 volts DC. Doesn't sound right. I'm going to take a look and pull the data on this. I'll point out that this unit is unplugged. Everything's discharged, including the capacitors. Right here, flipped over and inverted, mind you, this is drain and source on this MOSFET that I was getting the same voltages across. And we could see here that there is no electrical connection that directly connects these two. I say that because this is in circuit and the possibility exists, obviously, I still have to return this unit 
uh, for warranty. So I can't tear it up. I'd like to, but I can't, right? And the reason why I say this is this is in place and I measured the resistance between drain and source and found that these are in fact shorted. So this should be open between drain and source on a working uh, end channel Unifet MOSFET like this. this is from Fairchild. I looked this one up. By the way, for those wondering, this is an FDPF 10 November, 16 November Zulu is the type of uh, device that's here. And it is just the same voltage across because it is internally shorted. It looks like this is the component that has failed. Looking this part up on Mauser, I see that I could purchase one individually for about $1.50. If I were to put that into one of my other orders to exclude shipping, we could see that about $1.50 would get this unit working again. Uh, also, it's worth noting that if this were out of warranty and I were doing this, I would definitely be taking this piece out and doing a more exhaustive test, the capacitive test for this, to definitely determine this is the point of failure. I'd also be going around these components to see if they were in specification working from this unit back to the beginning to see what the problem is is there perhaps inadequate filtration in this capacitor is there is there something going on here with this cap that causes to happen we could take a look and see what this value is i'd like to take a look at this one for a moment what is it a 5d9 yeah so it's possible that this thermistor right here is inadequate for what's going on. I can't really say I don't have the tools with me or the ability to break this down now because it is under warranty. Look at it on the oscilloscope. I would bet that one or more of these components here is substandard or the heatsink here is inadequate. I, again, I can't escape this right here. Is, is there a backing here for this? Is it just not a good thermal connectivity here between this and the heatsink that it got too hot and failed? I really can't say. Maybe something got hot. The paint, the paint is coming off of this resistor. We could see. Can't be sure. Having returned home, I was hoping I could simply open the bottom of my machine, which is the automatic model, the industrial model, and look for a power supply down here. But only the controller board is down here. It seems as though uh, the power supply and all of the electrical components are up top in the machine it's not as easily as accessible as it is on the smaller machine we could see here a similar circuit on this circuit board also internally fused much larger fuse on this unit this is the automatic unit mind you what i also see here are heat sinks here for these two components q1 and q2 both of these components do have uh, material that allows for heat transfer onto the heat sinks on this unit. So this is something I didn't see on the last one. That could have been the cause of demise for that last power supply. So I wanted to take a look at this one and see how this one was constructed. It's interesting how much smaller the heat sinks are on this one. What I also know is I better get this thing back together before my wife gets home. I managed to have dodged that bullet. If she doesn't yell at me, we'll know she never watches my YouTube videos, so we're gonna find out. All in all, the inside of these units are made with a bare minimum of quality in mind. The very fact that you would put a fuse in here instead of the back of the case where the average consumer, based on anything that will cause the fuse to blow, would be forced to return it or throw it away, uh, speaks volumes uh, for this company and what they're putting out. Uh, so I'm going to have to reassemble this now. I hope you found this video informative, at least to give you an idea of what to look for if you're repairing this yourself, how I troubleshot from the power switch uh, through the fuse, uh, through the basic components of this power supply and onto this MOSFET. I hope you found it entertaining. Hit that thumbs up button. Helps me out a lot when you do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?